Hi, I'm Chris Bradshaw from Hexagon. In this video, now that we've got our completed Caesar 2 model, we'll take a look at how to set up and run the static analysis. We'll look at the static load case editor, including Caesar 2's recommended load cases plus how to create our own load cases. In addition, we'll take a brief look at the abilities that we have to organize and work with the load cases and the various different options that are available for each of those load cases. Finally, we'll run the static analysis and we'll take a brief look at the output results. Okay, so once the model is complete, uh, before we can run the analysis, we must perform the error check, which is this button here, just above the classic piping input. This will check the model for consistency and ensure that it is suitable for analysis. You will receive a number of messages and these messages are classified based upon the importance. What you want is to have zero error messages. Error messages will appear in red in this list here and an error message is something which uh, cannot be analysed. Uh, you must resolve it before you can proceed with the analysis. Here I have zero errors, uh, which is good, um, but I do have two warnings. These are pretty standard warnings here. These are the reducer alpha angle um, that was not specified. As I said, if we leave it blank, then Caesar 2 will compute a default value for us, and I'm happy with this uh, default value. And then I have some blue notes, which are simple notes uh, just for informational messages, including a center of gravity report. So if you do have any errors which appear in red, or you just want to learn more about the warning, what is the warning referring to, then you can click on any of the messages in the list and you will go straight to, as you can see in the graphics, the element which is causing the error or the warning. However, I'm happy with this. I don't need to resolve anything here so I can proceed with the analysis. So with a successful error check, errors equal to zero, then that enables the static load case editor button, which is this one here. And if you hit that button, the static load case editor will load. Right, so in the static load case editor, we have a set of default recommended load cases based upon the loads entered in the model and the design code selected. So because we have the spring hangers defined in the input, we have two spring hanger design load cases, uh, one to determine the weight and one to determine the hanger travel. The default for spring hanger load cases is to suppress the output because they're not real loadings, they're not real information, uh, so there's not really any need other than for hanger design to keep and review this information. So these two load cases, load cases 1 and 2, are for the hanger design. And then we have load cases 3, 4 and 5, which are the required load cases for the EN13480 design code that we've got selected. So we have an operating load case, which is the loadings are weight, temperature 1, pressure 1, and the hanger loadings. So this is our operating case. This is, uh, if you like, the real world load case, uh, where we can review uh, loads on equipment, loads on supports, etc. But this is not a stress case for EN13480. Some design codes it is, but not for EN13480. So for EN13480, the stress check cases are load case 4, weight, pressure and the hanger load, sustain loadings, this is all our primary loadings, and load case 5, which is a combination case. This is the algebraic difference between load case 3 and load case 4. So it's 3 minus 4, which is essentially isolating the effects of temperature. So we've got weight, temperature, pressure, hanger, minus weight, pressure and hanger. Uh, but if doing it this way accounts for any non-linearities within the situation as well. Um, you can see here for combination cases, the combination method can be selected here, algebraic being the default for an expansion load case. So these are the load cases which Caesar 2 suggests to us and will satisfy the selected design code. Of course, you can also create any load cases which you require as well. Simply add into the list by using the plus button here. Bear in mind that any combination load cases must be at the end of the load case listing. 
So if I select load case 4, add a new load case and choose to yes, renumber the load case combinations. The expansion load case now becomes load case 6 and I have load case 5 where I can create a custom load case. I can, for example, drag and drop from the available loads into load case 5. So maybe weight plus temperature for whatever reason this may be. Give it a name. Choose a stress type and various other options as you can see in the following columns. So if I just scroll across we can see various different options. You can choose again whether to keep or suppress the output status. If you do keep the output status, maybe you're only interested in stress in a particular load case, you can filter so all other results are hidden. If you have snubbers, you can activate or not with the snubbers. The hangers, you can choose to lock them out or ignore them. Uh, for example, in a hydro test load case, typically the spring hangers would be locked, so you could set those to be rigid. Uh, which elastic modulus is being used? The elbow stiffening pressure can be selected. And the elbow stiffening corresponding elastic modulus. Friction, if you wish to deactivate friction for any particular load case, you could set the friction multiplier to zero here. And if you're running a flange analysis, you can choose the temperature to run here. And if you're running a, a limit state analysis, uh, such as for the DNV offshore piping code, you can choose the limit state load type from here as well. With the loadings, you've got various different options. You could, for example, factor the loading if you want to account for a little bit extra weight for whatever reason. Maybe I need 10% extra weight for painting, for example. I can factor any of the loadings in here. So 110% of the weight. And if you have a large number of load cases, I've only got five here, but if we have a large number of load cases, any of these columns can be filtered on. So if I want to, for example, only look at the expansion load cases, I can add a filter by clicking on the filter icon, choosing the filter. So now I only see the expansion load cases. So if you have many load cases, some, sometimes you have maybe hundreds of load cases, that can be very useful. Alternatively, you can group the load cases. So if I grab hold of any of the columns and drag it into the top white area here. The load cases are then grouped by the selected uh, column. So I've got my expansion cases together, my hanger cases, operating and sustain cases grouped together like so. Again click the clear button to clear the filters. And if you want to do um, group editing of multiple load cases in one go, at the top right there is a group edit button. If you hit that, you go to the group edit window and I could select a group of load cases and maybe if I wanted to, for example, deactivate friction on all of the load cases, I could set the friction multiplier to zero and all of the load cases will now have friction deactivated. At any time you can of course return to the list view by hitting the same button in the top right to switch back to list view. Okay, so I have created a custom load case here. It's not a realistic load case, it's a little bit of a um, nonsensical load case here. So I'm going to go back to the default recommended load cases by Caesar 2, which can be done by hitting this button here, the recommended load case button. And I'll accept the set of load cases. And in addition to all of that, we don't have any wind and we don't have any wave loading here. But if we had to turn those on in the input, we could access the wind and the wave load tabs up at the top here to specify selecting the, um, the wind code or the wave function that we're going to select and enter in the necessary data there. Then once you have created your load cases and you're happy with that, hit the running man to run the analysis. The analysis will run and the output will appear.
All right, so here's the output window. And we see on the left hand side a list of all the low cases that we analyzed. As discussed, the hanger low cases, the results were suppressed, so they are disabled, grayed out, inactive. Then we have the operating sustained and the expansion load case. The first thing you'll see is the expansion case is shown in red. That means that there is an overstress situation in this example, uh, in this load case. So the expansion load case is overstressed. So the first thing typically that you would do if you see a red load case is to check the stressors report for that load case to see exactly what the issue is. In one of the later videos, we'll take a more detailed look at looking through the results. But for now, we're just going to take a look at the stressors load case report because that's where we have the clearest and most obvious issue. And as we can see here, yep, the stress evaluation check has failed. The highest stress anywhere in the system is 297% of the allowable at node 190. That is 848 and a half megapascals versus an allowable of just 285.7 megapascals. So why is 190? Well, first of all, if we reorder the report by we can reorder the report by any of the columns it's ordered by node number at the moment but if you double click on any of the column headings for example the ratio column I can reorder by that column first of all it will order low to high and we have a few rigid elements where Caesar 2 doesn't check the stresses by default so I'll double click again and now we see three node numbers actually shown in red here that's where three are above 100%. We also have node 80, which is 99.2% as well. And as you can see, these are 190, 90, and 180. These are the highest stress locations in the model. So if I close that, um, we can maybe take a look at the graphics output plot, which is this button here for 3D plot. And I can view the results graphically. So if we have an overstress situation, then making sure we're on the correct load case, load case 5. If I hit this button here, I can color the model by the stress percentage. Now I've changed my colors from the default. So I've got anything 40% and below set to white. 40 to 60% is yellow, 60 to 80 orange, and greater than 100% is red. You can change these simply select the field and adjust the color like so. Okay, now I can see clearly I've got some red down here at the pump connections. I'm just going to hide the tool tips as well. A little bit distracting. So here we can see the reducers are shown in red. That's where node 190 is. That's where node 90, 100 is, 80. That's all around my area where I had the overstress levels. Now it's probably reasonably clear as to what the issue is. There's also an issue around the T as well. It's orange, it's 55%, it's high-ish. But what's causing these issues is probably reasonably self-explanatory. We've got a very, very long leg here that will be expanding due to the thermal expansion. We can actually see that graphically if we hit this button here to view the deflected shape of the system. And if you wish, you can exaggerate the effects of this by hitting the little down arrow next to the icon and choosing to adjust the deflection scale. So it's at 6.73 at the moment, selected by Caesar 2, but we can exaggerate that. Maybe let's go up all the way to 25 for the scale factor. And this clearly shows what's happening here. We have the very long leg is expanding. Most of that thermal expansion is being pushed here and we've got high bending moments and therefore high stresses around the pump nozzle connections. Chances are we've got very high pump load uh, loads on the pump nozzles as well, but we've not checked those results as yet. So we know we have an issue. We need to resolve and uh, we need to reduce the effects of this thermal expansion causing the high bending moments and therefore the high stresses around the pump nozzle down at nodes 100 and 200. We'll take a look at how to do that in the next video. 
I hope you found that useful, but if you do have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Hexagon. Thank you for watching.